I asked several people what part of the book I should read, and there was no consensus. And because it is October, I decided I would read something out of the <coughs> rather lengthy uh, Frankenstein portion of the book. <coughs> and so that's, so that's what this is. Of the first three Frankenstein movies, I am by far most likely to pop The Bride into the media player. The original Frankenstein is arguably the best film as a film, but The Bride of Frankenstein is, well, it's just so darn gay. <laughs> James Whale, the British-born director of Frankenstein and The Bride, was openly gay in 1930s Hollywood, mind you. He lived with producer David Lewis for over 20 years. Hawk-nosed, wild-haired Ernest Thesiger, who played the cray-cray Dr. Pretorius, was known to be bisexual, and Colin Clive, Henry Frankenstein, in both movies, is rumored to have been gay, and it's speculated that angst over his sexuality contributed to the chronic alcoholism that resulted in his death in, at 37. Rare among film directors, James Well is the subject of a biopic of sorts, Gods and Monsters, 1998, a fantasia on the last few days of Whale's life, written and directed by Bill Condon, who would later write and direct Dreamgirls, based upon the 1995 novel Father of Frankenstein by Christopher Bram, and starring Sir Ian McKellen as Whale. Novelist, screenwriter, director, and star are all out gay men. With only the flimsiest excuse for a plot, the creature didn't really die so the doctor makes him a wife, and 75 minutes to kill, <laughs> Whale padded the bride with cadenzas of sheer silliness. These would include every scene involving Una O'Connor as the Frankenstein family maid, a performance that had to have been played for deliberately for laughs. She looks like an ostrich on too much coffee. <laughs> Her over-the-top reaction to seeing the not-dead-after-all creature shot entirely in close-up is worthy of Todd Browning's freaks. Mm -hmm. And for a woman in a service career, she seems to have a good deal of spare time. She's everywhere. <laughs> at the ruins of the windmill where the monster died, but not really. Later yelling at the captured, but not really, creature through the barred window of the village jail, surprisingly back on the job at the Frankenstein mansion, announcing old Dr. Pretorius. The ludicrous scene of Pretorius showing off his experiments, six-inch tall living humans, grown by Pretorius and kept in bell jars to Henry Frankenstein is trick photography for its own sake. It's deliberately silly. The miniature Henry uh, VIII escapes his jar and tries to climb into the jar with the miniature Elizabeth I. <laughs> the scene kills a little time but makes for an uncomfortable plot point. If Pretorius can make entire tiny humans and a brain for the female creature from scratch, why don't the scientists work with Pretorius's methods to create the bride? Instead, Dwight Fry goes out and murders a girl to harvest her heart. <laughs> Whale and his two queer buddies, Claude Rains was Universal's choice for Pretorius, Whale insisted upon Bessinger, also seem to have peppered the bride with a little inside gay humor. Prior to bringing up Pretorius into the Frankenstein's parlor, Una O'Connor describes him as a queer-looking gentleman. And <laughs> even allowing for the multiple meanings of the word queer, the mincing, lisping Fessiger seems a fit seems to fit a couple of definitions, and likely elicited some sniggering and elbow nudges among a subset of the audience. It has been argued that the blind hermit scene so brilliantly lampooned in Young Frankenstein is a queer-coded male couple. I say, mm, maybe. <laughs> but sometimes friendship between two men really is friendship. And before Gene Hackman ruined the scene for me forever, it was the most emotionally moving scene in the picture. <laughs> For real camp appeal, take another look at the presentation of The Bride, Elsa Lanchester, to the monster, Boris Karloff. Start with Bessiger's pritzy, prissy, curtsy-ish body language as he announces, The Bride of Frankenstein. <laughs> Check Lanchester's expertly painted face, drapey gauze couture costume, and towering two-tone coiffure, and consider that the doctors Frankenstein and Victorious apparently did her hair and makeup <laughs> <laughs> and draped that gown. <laughs> the Frankenstein mythos wouldn't get this gay until the Rocky Horror Picture. <laughs> <laughs>